Hi everybody, Natasha Koch here with the Van City Home Team and the Van City Scoop live with Remax All Points. And so today, I'm actually not in my usual location, but uh, as I'm here, I'm going to still do my live. Um, so we're going to talk today about, uh, well actually we're going to talk about the eight reasons to buy a home. Hey Chelsea, hey Jeanette. Um, so, but first actually I want to talk to you about the market update for March. I'm trying to get rid of the glare on my glasses, sorry. So we've got a decline for March in sales by 31%. Uh, so 31% is quite a substantial decline from last year. Uh, we've had, uh, we've actually not seen this since 1986. Hey Enns, how are you? Um, so yeah, we haven't had as big of a decline as this since 1986. So on the supply side, we had 4,900 listings. Hi, Lisa. Um, and that is up 52% from this time last year. So basically what that means, those two uh, percentages. Hey, Chewy. Chewy, that's Herbert, though. <laughs> Um, we have a, uh, so between the two percentages, we've got basically the sales to active ratio. So the sales to active ratio is at 13%. So what that means basically in a nutshell is that we're moving now from a balanced market, with, which we've been seeing, into a buyer's market, which is kind of the segue to why I wanted to talk to you about the eight reasons to buy a home. But what I do want to tell you is that the benchmark for single family homes right now in the greater Vancouver area are just over a million. Um, we've seen a decrease from last year at this time, so a single family home is down 8%. Uh, condos are down 6%, and townhomes are down 5%. So definitely some declines, and the reason basically is all of the policies that have happened over the last three years. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining everybody. Um, so over the last three years, we've seen foreign buyers tax, empty homes tax, additional tier for property tax, mortgage stress test, additional school tax, speculation and vacancy tax, which just came into play. So a lot of uh, public policies that are, I guess, meant to slow down the rapidly increasing real estate market. The problem is that, um, it doesn't really help. It just disrupts the cycles that have been, you know, ongoing for years and documented. So anyway, that is March 2019 market update. And now we'll kind of launch into the reasons to buy a home. So eight reasons to buy a home. Number one, pride of ownership. Pride of ownership. What does pride of ownership mean? It means that you can paint your walls purple if you want to, or you can play your music loud. Well, not too loud because you can still get in trouble for that. Um, you can attach things to your walls. You can make improvements to your property that aren't going to be to the benefit of the landlord or land. Well, I was going to say landlady, landlord. Um, and it just gives you a feeling of accomplishment. So you, when you own your first home, you feel, well, you feel really good. Number two, appreciation, and not just appreciating the fact that you've, you're have you a new homeowner, but your actual appreciation, meaning appreciation in value. So a lot of people um, use their home actually to hedge inflation. I mean, every year typically, and especially over a five-year time period, property values go up. I mean, regardless of recessions and things that happen, uh, property values always go up. So it's one of those constant things. Number three, mortgage interest deduction. So you own your own business and you have uh, uh, an office in your home. There's, you know, there's a lot of write-offs. If, uh, if you are independently employed, you can write off your home office, your supplies, your internet, your phone, um, cleaning supplies, office furniture. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can get creative with so that you can get some savings there. And then, of course, property tax savings, whatever you pay for your property tax. Uh, your mortgage interest, you know, you're going to make some savings there. That was actually tied number three and number four together, in case anybody's counting. Number five, uh, capital gains. So capital gains, you're exempt from capital gains, meaning when you go to sell your property and it's increased in value, uh, the gain 
you don't have to pay tax on. If you own a rental property, you do. So uh, the government definitely wants their share if you have profited. Hi, Vivian. Hi, thanks for joining. Uh, number six, equity loans. So this is kind of a big one right now, especially because I know that there's a lot of people out there uh, that you know are cutting back or they've realized they've maybe overspent on their credit cards and they are having trouble making the payments you know at 22 percent on your credit card so here's an opportunity if you have equity in your home talk to a mortgage broker get your place refinanced get a home equity loan so that you can consolidate some of your debt and then you can pay it off i mean i'm not encouraging people to use up the equity that's in their home to go out and go shopping but uh, if you are getting behind on payments and most of your payments are going towards interest your house is definitely a great thing to tap into. Number seven, which um, I, I kind of was researching eight top things. I probably should have said seven top things. Uh, number seven, though, is that you won't have to worry about getting evicted. So if you are worried about getting evicted, you probably uh, have bigger problems than home ownership anyway. But anyway, that's number seven. And Eight, of course, is forced savings. So anybody out there that is a bit of a shopper and not very good at saving money, great way to force yourself to save because as your property increases, you're also paying down the mortgage and you're ultimately saving your money every month. So you're not paying it to uh, your landlord. So regardless of the changes in real estate, Honestly, it's always it's always a good thing to buy. Real estate has always served me well. I've always made money and it's all relative based on time. So whenever you do buy, if the market fluctuates, it's really just a matter of waiting until it uh, moves upwards again, if you're thinking about selling. So um, buy real estate. Those are the eight <laughs> reasons to buy it. This is why I love what I do. Uh, I not only buy real estate myself, but I love helping other people invest and make money in the process and of course have pride of ownership. So thanks for joining. Hey Andrea, thanks for joining. I'm just finishing up and we will see you on the next Fan City Scoop. See you later guys. Bye-bye.